So, uh, this is uh, uh, another topic which is uh, the most important one for us in terms of the photogeology course. So, we will talk uh, in this lecture regarding uh, different uh, uh, type of photographs taken by uh, by any aerial at, at any aerial platform either by satellite or uh, your aircraft or either you are using helicopter or anything. Okay. So, basically the aerial photography if you look at why we use the aerial photographs, because it improves the vintage point, defines situation at a point in time, it, it will give a permanent record, can record information beyond visible spectrum, increase sexual resolution and geometric fidelity. Why use of aerial photograph instead of satellite images? Here you have an ability to choose your own dates, when you want to fly. Otherwise, in terms of uh, if you are taking the satellite data, whenever the satellite will move over that area, only that data you will be able to collect. But here, you can decide your own time and date, when you want to fly and where you want to fly exactly. So, this is an important part why we use aerial photos more and why it is useful as compared to the satellite data. Relatively inexpensive, because for launching a mission, where you collect the data by satellite sensors, it will have lot of expense. Okay. But here, if you are having a very good camera, you can get into the flight and take the photographs, either you use helicopter or maybe an another like nowadays we are using unmanned aerial vehicles. Okay. So, you can use UAVs also and try to collect the data, whenever you want and wherever we want actually, depending on the, the conditions. Okay. And it comparatively, you will have higher resolution, what we are looking at in the satellite image rays. Okay. So, these are the few things where the aerial photographs are important and more useful as compared to the satellite image rays. So, type of aerial photographs we will discuss of course, in detail uh, when we are talking about uh, the, the type of photographs, but in general we have they depends on the orientation of the photos okay. that is the orientation of the sensor or the camera by which you have collected the data. Okay. So, either it is exactly vertical or it is oblique and oblique also high oblique or low oblique. Okay. So, you can have uh, different type of photographs. Spectral characteristics of the film, you will have panchromatic, black and white infrared, ultraviolet, color or color infrared. So, you have again the range of spectral characteristics of the or different, different films, which are available, which you can use depending on your requirements. Okay. So, classification of photos, aerial photographs, following classification of photographs are possible. So, one is on the basis of the alignment of the optical axis. Now, this optical axis we are talking in terms of taking into consideration the camera lens. Okay. So, vertical if optical axis of the camera is held in a vertical or nearly vertical position with respect to ground. Okay. Tilted an unintentional or unavoidable tilt or inclination of the optical axis from vertical produces slight tilt in the photographs. Okay. So, you may have come across many such photographs, which are slightly tiltless and they are not exactly vertical. Okay. Oblique photographs taken with an optical axis intentionally inclined okay, to the vertical. Following are different types of oblique photographs, if you take you have high oblique, oblique which contains an apparent horizon of the earth, then you have low oblique, apparent horizon does not appear. So, horizon you are looking at, 
So, if you are having a land and then you are coming into uh, looking at the contact of the sky and all that. Okay. So, that is what we are calling the horizon. So, high oblique and low oblique. Okay. So, in low oblique apparent horizon, you will not be able to see, but in high oblique, you will be able to see the, the horizon. Another one is tri metrogon, there is a combination of vertical and oblique photograph, in which the central photo is vertical and the side ones are oblique. So, if you have this combination, then you will say that this is tri metrogon type of photograph. Okay. So, where you have the combination of vertical and two oblique photographs on the side. Convergent is a pair of low oblique photographs taken in sequence along a line of flight in such a manner that both the photographs cover essentially the same area with their axis tilted at a fixed inclination from the vertical in position of in that direction. Okay. So, these are the type of photographs. So, if you look at this one, the sketches which explains to some extent that how the vertical will be. So, you are having with respect to your optical here, you have the completely vertical photographs you are taking here. Okay. So, in vertical with respect to your ground here, whereas here slightly oblique. Okay. So, this camera is oblique to the ground here highly oblique more tilt okay. and this which you see is your plane of the lens okay. and you have in combination of overlapping if you are looking at the panorama then you will have the complete photograph covering in wider area okay. but again you may have at the center, this is a combination of all, center may be vertical, but the sides will be an oblique one. Okay. So, if you look at the comparison in terms of uh, the vertical photograph, low oblique, high angle or high oblique photographs and the, the their importance in terms of the coverage of area, scale and all that, this is the important table which you can remember. Okay. So, for vertical the tilt will be around less than 3 degrees okay. and this is a typical characteristics of that. Okay. Whereas, in case of the low oblique horizon does not appear, in case of the high oblique horizon appears here okay. and the in terms of the coverage you will have the least coverage, because you are not viewing oblique. So, you will have least cover in terms of the vertical photograph, you will have comparatively less in terms of low oblique, but you will have a very large area covering when you are looking at or taking the high oblique aerial photographs. Okay. Area covered will be mostly rectangular trapezoidal in case of the low angle and trapezoidal also in case of the high angle. Okay. Scale will be almost uniform if the terrain is flat, otherwise the, the, the scale will change. Okay. Because if you are taking for example, from this point here and you have to take the, the, the photograph, if the terrain is undulating and the, the height or the scale is different at different point, okay. but you can average it out. If you are having a flat terrain, then the, the photograph will have very uniform scale. Okay. In case of low angle or low oblique photographs, it decreases from the foreground to the background. Okay. So, if you if you are having in camera here and if you are looking at 
for example, this area here, then you will have a different year scale, whereas if you are viewing this one, it will be different. So, in foreground decreases, okay, the scale decreases from the foreground to background. Okay. Similarly, is in the case of decreases from the foreground to background. So, difference with maps will be least because maps usually have a very uniform scale. So, it will have a less least difference with the available maps. This will have less, but this will have greater. Because again, if you are viewing from here, then you are having high oblique. So, you will have greater variation in terms of the scale as compared to the, the maps which are available. Advantage because it is vertical, most of the information you will be able to mark accurately. So, easiest to map, whereas in terms of the low, it is again not very easy. And this one that is an high angle oblique, it is good in terms of the economy and the illustration, because you will be able to cover a greater area. So, the coverage is very large here, but here it the coverage will be comparatively less. There are few things which uh, uh, are important, which we also discussed in the previous one, that if you are having vertical photograph over the level terrain, then this point that is the, the, the lens or the information collected by the camera will be almost 90 degrees here. Okay and that is what we also come call as an principal point. So, the optical axis will be almost vertical with respect to your ground, whereas in case of the low oblique aerial photographs over the flat terrain, the, the axis will be inclined. Okay. And as we, we were talking about that if we are having the the vertical photographs, the tilt could be less than 3 degrees. Okay. So, this is permissible, whereas in this case, the horizon appears. So, in this case, it or sorry, horizon will not appear in this case, that is low angle, whereas in the high angle, it will be, it will be seen. Okay. So, this is what we see the high angle, okay, where you will be able to see the horizon. So, I will show a couple of uh, ground for the photographs, which have been collected or taken by the from the aircraft, okay, which will clear your understanding of the high oblique, low oblique and vertical. Now, this is uh, uh, we did some uh, uh, survey uh, in Kutch after 2001 Bhuj earthquake where we used the uh, small aircraft to map the area. Now, the reason was that we were not having very high resolution satellite data for this region and we wanted to map uh, the surface deformation, which was been caused by 2001 Bhuj earthquake. It was large, very damaging earthquake, which occurred. So, we decided that let us fly and try to uh, look at and understand the, the pattern of damage in the area in Kutch district, as well as the surface deformation caused by 2001 Bhuj earthquake. Now, this is uh, uh, the satellite uh, photo, corona satellite photo. I have put upside down, just to compare with the, the aerial photographs, which we took. So, where uh, uh, these are the location, maybe you will be able to read out, this is Jafar Nagar and this is known as Lodai and Drang. Okay. And uh, we may uh, talk most likely, if, if we are having in this part or maybe in the part 2 about the mapping of active faults and all that, but this is the uh, what we call the fault line, 
and based on our studies we suggest that this fault line is inactive and is having a capability of producing large magnitude earthquakes in near future. But the question was whether this fault line was responsible for producing 2001 Bhuj earthquake or not, we wanted to map that actually. So, what we did, uh, we uh, so, it, so in photograph if you look at uh, this side is uh, north, this is your north and this we are viewing towards south. Okay. So, this is uh, the south or southeast. Okay. So, this is an uh, you can easily make out now which type of photograph we are looking at. Okay. We are unable to see the horizon. So, this photograph which was collected by a normal SLR camera is an low oblique aerial photograph, okay, where you are unable to see the horizon. And this portion which you see here on the aerial photograph, you can see this portion here on the satellite photograph. This two lines here, if you look at, these are the two lines which have been seen here, this is the ridge lines here. Okay. So, this you can compare. So, we we fly we flew like this in this direction viewing the terrain over like this. Okay. So, this was an low oblique aerial photo. Another one, now here this is slightly high angle or high oblique aerial photograph, because you are able to see the horizon here you can see the horizon. So, this is the two different photographs which were been taken along the flight. Now, this portion is over here. And this is from Jawaharnagar. Again, we are able to see the horizon. So, this is Jawaharnagar area, which we have taken the photograph here. We are able to see the horizon on the top. So, this is your high oblique photograph. This is your low oblique photograph. This is also high oblique photograph. Now, low sun angle aerial oblique photograph. This is from San Andreas fault. Again, we are unable to see the horizon, but this will been taken to map the San Andreas fault system here. Okay. So, where you can see the drainage and this is the, the fault which crosses in the area. Okay. So, oblique aerial photos, photo mosaic showing ground deformation associated with 2001 earthquake in catch. So, what we did was again um, we are unable to see the horizon. So, this is a low oblique uh, aerial photograph and since we took the photographs quickly keeping in mind that we may use this for uh, to view this area or the terrain in three dimension that is how we can have the stereographic vision, because there is an overlap here. If you see this part is having the overlap, as well as it can help us in mosaicing the complete terrain or, or the mosaicing the photographs to have an bird eye view of the, the terrain we are interested in. So, what we did was this was as I told that um, the aerial photography you can go any time and do it depending on what is the purpose, what you want to map. Okay. So, we flew, we did not wait for the satellite information to come or the satellite data. We flew, we collected the information and when and then we did the ground truthing. So, that help us in reducing our time, because we knew that which area was showing extensive deformation. So, we went directly to that area and did our field mapping. 
So, the box which has been shown here in the red, I will show a couple of ground photographs now. Okay. So, close up of that here, if you see there is again and close up shot. So, what we did to do this is that after we, we were able to identify from air that this area is showing uh, extensive deformation or prominent deformation we asked the pilot to reduce the height okay, and we flew at the lower elevation. So, this is again another advantage if you are flying and taking the information or collecting the information by the aircraft. Okay. So, we, we, we took very close photographs, we reduced the fly, uh, flying height. Okay. Similarly, here this is the ground photograph of this deformation line here. Another one, this one is the another deformation line, which we identified from the aerial photograph and did the field investigations. Okay. So, this reduced our time and we were able to pick up the exact correct areas okay, or the points, which we are interested to map. Okay. So, this is a aerial photo, this is the ground photograph of the same. Okay. So, this portion here we are able to see this one, okay, this landform. So, it is very useful in quick identification and conducting the field investigations. This is from Andaman Island and the type of photograph again you see here that you are able to see the horizon. Hence, this is your eye oblique aerial photograph. Another one from again from the San Andreas fault system, you are able to see the horizon here. So, this is your high oblique aerial photograph. Now, type of projections, if you look at, we have parallel, the projecting rays are almost parallel here, orthogonal projecting rays are perpendicular to the plane of projection. This is a special case of parallel projection. Maps are orthogonal projection. The advantage of this projection is that the distance, angle and area in plane are independent of elevation difference of the object. This is almost you are taking an vertical photographs. Okay. So, these are termed as orthogonal projections okay. and we are mostly interested in using ortho photographs. Okay. Then we have central, central projection is the starting point for all photogrammetry. In this projection, rays passes through a point called the projection center or perspective center the image projected by a lens system is treated as central projection, although strictest sense it is not so. Pattern of aerial photographs or aerial photography is usually done keeping in mind the overlap along the same line of flight and to the adjacent one. Because this helps in having the ortho photographs or you can say the stereo photographs. Okay. Ortho photographs when it is taken vertically, then definitely it is there, but while the line of, along the line of flight. Okay. So, this shows the line of flight, you will have you should have the overlap of 60 percent of the area. So, photograph taken first and the second photograph which has been taken should have almost 60 percent of overlap along the direction of line of flight, but sideways overlap you may have around 30 percent. So, any photograph taken from a point in the air generally taken in, in the straight run with each photograph overlapping the adjacent by 60 and there is a 30 percent overlap between each run, the sideways over that is 
along the side face. Okay. So, possible to view the photographs stereographically, since the same ground surface has been photographed from two different points. Okay. So, this will help us in generating the stereographic images. So, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture.